As I was developing my designs for my animatronic hearts, one of the ways that I tried to get an impression of how the heart might move in a silicone skin was to use a elastic fabric or in some cases just a sock to try and get an impression of what the skin might look like. So after realising how expensive silicone casting is, I decided that making a full jacket out of a sock-like elastic fabric material would be a really nice alternative to be able to make an animatronic hat cheaply and easily as compared with silicone casting. So all in all this project costs around £20 for me um, whereas the materials for the silicone jacket alone cost upwards of £100 in the silicone version of my design. So this is a good low cost, easy to make option and I also have the capability for you to use either a battery pack or a plug-in mains power source so that means it can be portable. This project is super simple on the 3D printing and assembly and electronic side but I would recommend that you maybe have a little bit of sewing experience or you're willing to sort of experiment a little bit when it comes to making the jacket because as someone who is quite new to sewing myself I'm not 100% confident in my patterns. All that means is you might just need to make some very minor adjustments like tightening it in some places. If you don't have any sewing experience don't worry, I didn't either. Um, but with a little bit of trial and error, I think you'll be able to get it working quite easily. It is also possible to use this heart mechanism with my silicone skin jacket that I'll be making a separate video on shortly. So as for the 3D printing of this design, there's no particular requirements. All of my components were printed around 0.25mm layer height, which is pretty high really and everything was made in PLA. I didn't use any supports except for the shell components uh, like the outer panels, but any of the structural or mechanical components could be pr printed quite easily without supports in PLA. As for the post-processing of the printing, it's unlikely that you'll really need to do anything. Um, I didn't have to have brims on any of my prints, um, and as I mentioned, I didn't use very much support material, so the only thing that you might need to do is drill out some of the holes if you're if they don't come out the exact right size and you would only really need to do that on the linkage components where the holes are either three millimeter or two millimeter so once you have all the parts printed um, you're ready to put it together so the first thing that you need to do is prepare the ball linkages so you should start with eight m2 servo ball links and you need to cut away a really small amount from the end of it um, roughly about half of that hexagonal section uh, you want to cut away with a craft knife. I recommend that you save these offcuts because um, they make a good alternative to um, like nylock nuts which at that size are really expensive it's like 50p per nut so that's a good thing to keep. You then want to get an M2 screw or just some M2 threaded rod and cut off four short lengths of it no more than about 10 millimeters long uh, using a saw or some old pliers if you're very careful um, and you screw pairs of the ball links together into each other using these offcuts and you want to tighten them such that the holes are at right angles to each other. Um, you can also use a little bit of glue just to secure it if you're not entirely confident in the thread. The next step is to attach the linkages to the base. So it's a good idea to check the images to make sure you can see exactly how these are going together. The innermost pivot point should have only two uneven linkages as they're called in the files. Um, only two uneven linkages on the outside of the base secured with a 10mm M3 screw. The outermost pivot points need four even linkages secured with an M3 times 20mm screw and a nylock bolt. Uh, you want to ensure that the linkages on the bottom side of the base, which is the side with the raised sections with the holes, are on the inside, by which I mean closest to the base with the top side linkages on top of them. And then with all pivots you want to take care to make sure that they can move loosely enough and there's no sort of friction with the bolts or the uh, base. You then want to prepare the motor. So these motors you can quite easily get them from a lot of different places. Um, there is some really high quality ones and some really really bad quality ones. 
I'll link you to ones that you can get easily off Amazon, um, but I would recommend you maybe shop around for some more sort of genuine ones if you can afford to and if you can wait for the delivery time. So because there's different variations on this dual shaft 90 degree motor, you might need to make some minor adjustments. Uh, so one of the things you might have to do is to file down the output shaft so that the wheel can sit closer to the motor. You can just do this with a, a little file. Once the wheels are on, you also need to cut the shaft flush with the wheel using a saw, ideally. Uh, like a little hacksaw and then if you need to you could also use some glue to secure the wheels because you don't want them to come off if they're not tight enough on the shaft so then you want to solder the motor um, if you build in the battery version you just need two short lengths of wire to power the motor which can just be simply soldered onto the terminals um, and then you can adjust that length of wire later so just leave around 120 centimeters of length on each wire if you're using the wired design, however, and you're not using the battery pack, you want to remove the outer sheath from the cable to leave two exposed wires around 80 centimeters long and strip the ends. Um, you want to feed them through the holes in the base of the design and then through the, the base you want to solder it onto the motor. Um, it's very important that you do it that way because um, if you do it, you won't be able to get the motor in. Um, you can also wrap some electrical tape around the terminals to protect them as well. So now you want to put the motor in position. So regardless of which uh, type you're building, it should be fairly easy to just slot the motor in. It could be a little bit tight, so make sure you're careful of the uh, terminals that you don't pull on them too hard as you fit it in. Once again, there's some variations with the motors. So in some of them, the little top tab is tight enough that you could screw an M3 bolt into it and it'd hold quite well, whereas other sizes um, it's a little bit bigger and you wouldn't be able to screw the M3 bolt into it. So I've left the hole on the base small enough that it can be threaded into if the hole on the motor is too big, but it also you could drill it out to about 3mm and then you could bolt into it the opposite way depending on your motor. And if, all, if that fails you can always just secure it with a bolt if you need to, there's space in the design. You also want to secure the motor with one of the motor support components as they're called on each side of the base with an M2 by around about 10mm screw. Um, taking care to ensure the wire is comfortable running through the holes in the base. You then need to attach the teeth components, so it's very important that you figure out which is which because all four are different. So notice that there's a narrower version and a thicker version. The narrower version is for the bottom side, which is the side um, where you made the linkages close together and the fatter version is for the top side. On the side with the narrow teeth you can secure them with M3 16mm long screws and a nylock nut and you want the head to be on the outside of the design um, whereas the thicker linkages need a 20mm M3 screw and then you also use a nylock nut and again you want the head facing outwards. The other hole which is closer to the center of the design connects with an M2 screw and it actually connects straight through the ball linkages so you want to have a ball firstly going through the ball linkages then through the tooth component then finally through the linkage and then you can put an M2 nylock nut on the end of there or you could use the offcuts from the ball links that you made earlier if you don't have M2 nylock nuts but having said that they're not as good as nylocks so it's a good idea to use some just some super glue or just thread locking compound if you have it um, or just anything to stop the thread from loosening. Then finally you want to affix the ball links to the wheels on either side so using a 12mm M2 screw screw the ball links one on top of the other onto the wheel and ensure that the two sides are even. Um, notice as well that the wheel has multiple holes and this is because some of these motors since some of them are real cheap and rubbish um, the two sides of the shaft don't line up correctly so there's different holes so you can get them so that they're perfectly in line so if you're doing the battery version the next step is to build the battery packs the way that you build the battery pack is by screwing in the four brackets into the battery base using four four millimeter m2 screws and screwing this assembly onto the main base using 20mm M2 screws and some M2 bolts. This is quite fiddly, so it might take some time to do that. So then you want to use some short lengths of wire and on one side of the battery pack connect two pairs of the battery slots and then 
once you've fed the wire through, just twist the strip ends a little bit so that the battery has a good bit of copper to make contact with. On the other side, you want to use one long length of wire to connect the two furthest apart holes in the same way as you did on the opposite side, and then the two nearest holes together will be the positive and negative inputs for the power supply. The battery pack also has a built-in space for the speed controller, so clamp positive and negative wires for the battery pack into the DC input terminal and do the same for the motor. Um, obviously it doesn't matter about the polarity for the motor because it's a DC motor, so it can be either way around. Um, and then slot it into place and secure it with the nut that the controller comes with. When you put in the batteries in, just notice that the batteries need to be in series so that they add up to 6 volts. So as you're putting them in, just follow the batteries along so you're going positive to negative to positive to negative um, and then the final outputs are obviously one positive and one negative. If you're doing the wired version, rather than a battery pack on the top, it has a top panel um, which provides a little bit of strain relief to the wire. So the way that you put it on is by firstly pushing the wire through the panel and sliding along until it meets the heart, at which point you can secure it with four five or six millimeter M3 screws and then wire up the uh, DC speed controller in the same way as you would with a battery version. You also need to solder a 5.5 millimeter DC input socket and attach that to the DC speed controller. And then finish it off by screwing on the heart panels using 6mm M2 screws. So now onto making the jacket. So for the kind of fabric you want, I recommend a stretchy sort of jersey fabric. The stretchier the better, because it'll make it look more natural, but do note that it might make it a little bit harder to sew. You could even use a sort of really stretchy fabric like Lycra. I'll leave it up to you. You can use your own artistic initiative. So using the pattern provided, print out the shapes and cut them so that you can trace them onto your fabric. Uh, you want to cut out each part, leaving a space outside the lines to allow you to sew. Um, if you do want to use a zip, you want to start by sewing that into the back panel um, where you've got the slot as shown. Um, but do note that you'll need to leave the very top part of the zip unsewn because the zip itself is not long enough to allow the entire mechanism to fit through it so the fabric at the top of the zip needs to be able to stretch slightly just to be able to fit the mechanism in um, and that's something I talked about in my previous video where I went over the development of the heart design. Next you want to do the front piece uh, there's a little section that needs to be folded over to make it more round so fold along that line and sew it shut and trim off any excess fabric you can then connect the zip side and the front side, ideally use a sewing machine to just sew this together. But this is very important, if you're using the battery pack, there's also a third panel to sew along the top connecting the front and back panels, um, just to give a little bit more space for the battery pack at the top. So you should be able to notice that in the pattern in the download. I do recommend that you frequently test the fit and if you need to make any adjustments, uh, feel free to because as I said I'm not 100% confident in my pattern making abilities. Once you've got the main pouch and you're happy with it, you can make all the other giblets by sewing the two halves of them together, turning them inside out and stuffing them. I've got some markings on the main jacket pattern for where these should be attached, but feel free to mess around with the placement um, as you see fit because obviously no, no two hearts are exactly the same and you might have a better idea about how to arrange them. I found that it was simpler to just sew these by hand. If you're more skilled with a sewing machine than I am and you think you can sew with a sewing machine then I think that'd be better. So hopefully you should be able to just slot the heart in and it should work as intended. If there was any confusion over any parts of that it might be a good idea to check my instructable where there's some thorough text instructions and some pictures to help you. Uh, I hope you can get some use out of this design whether it be the battery version or the wired version. I really enjoyed making it but I was after something that was also a little bit more realistic. So in my next video I'm going to show you how I made a servo version of this heart mechanism that has a little bit more particular motion that I can program specifically. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to make the silicone jacket. As a note, you can use the DC motor mechanism that I've just explained in this video. You can use that in the silicone heart. I would say it doesn't look quite right. It's a little bit too sort of exaggerated motion, but I don't know. You might prefer it. But either mechanism works in either jacket. So as always, a huge thank you to my patrons and anyone who watches my videos and subscribes and interacts with me. 
But here is a really big thank you to Captain Awesome, Ola Sander, Aaron Hurley, Aaron Nance, Adam Salmi, Alexander Kokshirov, Andrew Pusey, Armin Oong, Brian Sieper, Kyle Hoffman, Silver Buena, Christopher LaRoche, Daryl Barney, David Churchman, David Gentry, Elvin Hansen, Eric Klott, Eric Farrow, Ernstu Stratemans, Fly Mario, Geeksmith, and Gay Sierra, George Hart, Drake Tylin, Ian James. James Sturgeon, Jason Moore, Jeffrey Warren Park, Jason Souza, Jens Larson, Justin Butler, Mega Project Lab, Matt Indrick, Matt Falletta, Michael, Michael Shepard, Mike Puller, Mike Porter, Ollie Johnson, Paul, Paul Lopes, Pepe Hammond, Yemi, Rick Gordon, Robert R. Wells, Sergey, Sid Taylor, Tamin Hershey, Spider-Math, Matt Norman, Stephen Harris, Tate Leswing, Werner Schultz and William Winstead. Next video is the servo heart mechanism. I'll see you there.